previously on Will the Mini Jeep Make It to Moab, you saw the first 550 miles of this off-road journey over five days. Before we discovered that driving an underpowered vehicle without an oil cooler through a 40 degrees Celsius desert results in spectacular engine failure. Oh, it's f***ing in it. <laughs> However, rather than fixing Willie and carrying on immediately, I had to be an adult and do some engineering work on three ships at sea. Hello, and welcome to a ship in the middle of the Atlantic Ocean. And by the time I got back, summer had ended. I set to work repairing Willie in my friend Jenny's garage. Say hi to YouTube, Jenny. Ah, I'm not wearing a bra. <laughs> <laughs> Neither am I. <laughs> I replaced the engine, fitted an oil cooler, and then got the swing arm welded back together that I'd somehow snapped in half. By the time all of this was done, it was now December. So to regain some authenticity, I got myself and Willy dropped off at the exact GPS coordinates that the engine blew up at previously, set up the camera and tripod, and resumed our journey. The story continues. And I just want to be clear, all I did was repair the Jeep and fit new tires. I still have no idea what I'm doing. Well, with all the extra layers, I don't fit in as well. <laughs> God. All right, well, hopefully it's not too cold. Oh yeah, so uh, the, the windscreen just completely shattered like in the cold, I touched it and I, I don't have any footage of it, so like, I don't know, maybe we'll like CGI something in. Uh, I don't think this is going to go particularly well. <laughs> onwards! But it's not really onwards, is it? I've got to always turn around to go and pick up the tripod. It's quite cold, I don't know how many of these shots you're going to get, so uh, treasure them. <laughs> did a few miles of tarmac, past the lay-by where Mike discovered me at the end of the last video, before turning down a trail and resuming our off-road adventure. Now with snow. Time to see how these new tyres handle it. Might as well see what the steering's like, I guess. Quite a lot of understeer. Ah. We've, I've, I've lost my clothes. <laughs> I forgot to put the strap on. <laughs> Uh, right, well that's one USB-C cable dead. From a pulling away and traction perspective, it's not actually that bad. These super chunky tyres look like they're really well. Even if they are destroying that wheel. Having proven Willy was okay in two inches of snow on a smooth trail, it was time for my route to test us further. <laughs> Virgin snow! We're going down there! <laughs> Oh, this is how you end up getting life flyers. Hands down. This is going surprisingly well. Okay, so not exactly amazing, but we were coping with the snow way better than I expected, which was good news because the terrain was only going to get more remote and much more difficult. chunky tyres, but that's impressive. But 8 horsepower will only get you so far. Probably about halfway up this hill. Oh. <laughs> oh, no, really, no, really. <laughs> ah, tits. Time to reverse and give it another go with a run-up. Beans. Yeah. 
carried on driving like an expert. Super, please send me a new helmet. Or if you're a company that makes nice flip up helmets that are quiet, then if Super won't send me one, you can get the publicity. I promise to be very professional with my advertising. Come on, you twat! slowly continued our ride with this valley looking very pretty, and me occasionally looking terrified as I thought Willy was going to drive us off the edge of the trail to our deaths. This is stupid. We did in fact not get up that. That's too steep for Willy. You still there? Yeah. Hello. This hill was too steep for Willy to carry me up it, so it's time to think of some novel ways to help him. Throttle, but B stood outside of the jeep. Go on then, you get a tripod shirt. And it's a good thing I set up the tripod, because it really helps convey what it's like pushing a 200 kilogram Tonka toy uphill through snow. I guess. It's a pain in the ass. We've got into the hole now, haven't we? You bastard. <sighs> Tits. Well, you know the rule. Gotta go and get a tripod. <laughs> Running a bit hot, so riding without my helmet and my with my jacket open for a bit, try and cool down, and hopefully, no more pushing. Well, the snow got deeper and the trail got steeper, so of course we got stuck. But this allowed me to try another method for getting the mini jeep going. I present to you the scooter usually followed by the Nutcracker. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> Me, my squashed testicles and Willy soldiered on though, and as we climbed higher and higher, the snow got deeper and deeper, and the slopes weren't exactly flattening out either. Uh-oh, 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 <laughs> uh please, please stop. Yes. And the push it. Again. How's about you just turn left? Ah yes, the joys of a solid rear axle. Sometimes steering doesn't really do much. Left, you prick! Stop going into the bushes! You little bastard. I mean, is that a photo opportunity? This sucks. <sighs> oh, tits. Got that hill. Well, this is going to suck all of the balls forwards. Not me in touch with that. No, 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 no. no. <laughs> and despite the temperature being sub zero, I was now so hot underneath my Gore Tex trousers that I had to dump some heat. <sighs> Oh, right. I'm having fun. This is a fun thing to do. I should have bush and dumped snow in my helmet. And good news, the hill was going to level out, right? Uh, oh, piss. Carries on. So the problem beneath the snow is all of these rocks. 
and I've got tiny wheels and you can't go over them at any sort of speed. Then throw in uphill and snow and we're just getting stuck. That better be the top. I've done that and it's horrible. And after six hours of struggling, we eventually got to the top of the mountain range. Oh, made it. And after a quick break to catch my breath, we were not only treated to some flatter trails, but some beautiful scenery. Eventually it was time to descend down from the mountain and into the valley below. And I do hope my drone footage has conveyed just how beautiful this place is. The GoPro video often struggles to convey the majesty of the scenery, and the audio doesn't exactly help either. Once down on level ground, the snowy trails were replaced with mud, but I'm not worried about getting muddy, I'll just make a manly noise or something. Ah! <laughs> I need to put my Gore-Tex on because I'm going to get absolutely destroyed by that mud. Yeah, those wheel arches don't work. It's always difficult for me to convey just how cold it is in these situations. So while I might not be wearing gloves, there are still signs it's actually quite chilly. I don't know exactly how cold it is, but I've just gone to put my Gore-Tex on and I found that the bottoms of my trousers has frozen where they got wet in all that snow. I was glad to finally make it into the flat valleys. After seven hours of driving and pushing, Willie and I had averaged just four miles an hour coming over those mountains. We drove into the darkness a little more before setting up camp to allow me to recoup some of the energy lost from the day's struggling. Well, we are practically tropical. Uh, man, oh, there's so much condensation. Uh, right, just imagine it's really warm when I'm in a sauna. Try to get up and carry on moving. Oh, wow, I'm really steamy. Ah, wow, this is excellent footage, good work. This, this was worth filming. Mmm, lovely. Leather boots that are frozen and you can shake <laughs> with the ice stuck in them. Here is my camp. You see Willy and the tent. Those are some mountains that I've got to pass. I think I'm heading like through that bit. I got my boots on, finally. Just waiting for it to suck the heat out of my feet so that the ice will melt and they can bend properly. If you want a little cold weather hack, uh, keep your drink inside your sleeping bag so that when you wake up, you can drink it. Mmm. Because if you don't, <laughs> your water is frozen. I've got a gallon of ice. Mmm. <laughs> nom nom nom. I'm not going to film this bit for you because all of my batteries are being destroyed by the cold. And, um, I've got to try and uh, look after everything. I'm going to pack up and I'll see you when I'm sort of bouncing along in pain somewhere. Here we go. Mountain pass. And then hopefully we can smash past all of this snow out into the sand Raphael swell, which means, in theory, it just goes back to being dry desert. It'll still be absolutely cold as balls, but no precipitation. So, time to do the final snowy mountain pass, apparently, and then there would be no more snow. Time to see what chaos awaits. Mm -hmm. 
so we began with the drive over the snowy mountain, hoping that the snow would end so we could complete our mission. But first, here's some footage of the surface that we're driving. Whoops, that's the Macarena. Well, our adventurer had sent it up into the hills. Not exactly fast and lacking in thrills. And then it got so steep he stopped completely. Hey, Mac, what's wrong with me? Well, that didn't work. Time for pushy push. Oh, well, I don't know how you went over my foot. That really hurt. Ah, it doesn't look steep, but it is. I'll fix that in post. Yeah. To help convey the drive I'm on, I then set up the tripod. Professional filming. Aye! Go! Is that recording? Yes. Put the helmet on so that you don't have a continuity error. Oh, stand left! Ah, no! Not off the cliff! Mummy. <sighs> Watch the clip back. <laughs> oh, I look like a moron. Excellent! Right, save that, take everything apart, and then take it back to the mini jeep and continue. Goodbye! If you've been affected by today's singing, you can send your complaints to ed.marked.c90adventures.co.uk. And whenever I open these emails, I always make sure that I'm protected by nordvpn.com forward slash c90adventures. Now that is a segue. You see, whenever someone sends me an email after watching one of my videos and I open it, you're seeking therapy. It's possible for them to hide malware inside the email. So I make sure that I'm using today's video partner, nordvpn.com forward slash c90adventures to protect my online privacy. NordVPN's threat detection scans files as they're being downloaded for malware and warns you about dangerous websites. And with their 30-day money-back guarantee, you can even try it out for free. So go to nordvpn.com forward slash c90adventures and you can get an exclusive creator deal using my link. And because it's Nord's 11th birthday, you get an additional gift with every purchase of a two-year plan. Back to the video. Last part of the uphill done, we were now at the top of the pass, about to leave all of the snow behind us, ready to drop down into the San Rafael Swell with no precipitation below, where the driving would get a lot easier. Right. So I finally made it to the top of the hill, ready to drop down to the other side where it's all dry and it's just sand and there's no snow and there's no more mountains and I've I've made quite <laughs> the miscalculation. <sighs> so I'm just going to carry on and see how much I regret the route that I've chosen. So, bad news, I read the map wrong or something, so the snow doesn't stop here. But good news, I was now treated to six miles of snow covered downhill. And no, this footage isn't sped up. It was awesome fun. Oh, What's the atmosphere like? <laughs> yes! Jesus Christ, Willie! <laughs> Holy shibbles, we are motoring now! <laughs> okay, brake, 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 brake. Eventually we made it down to the valley below, where the temperature rose enough to give us a break from the snow, which I used to allow my salami sandwiches to defrost, and to adjust the tracking on the mini jeep. It seems that one of the 5,000 rocks I had hit was making the front right wheel stick out. <laughs> 
That is about as good of an alignment as the thing you get on a Chinese vehicle on the side of the road. That wheel is like straight, sort of, and that one's like straight, sort of. Well, hopefully my salami is defrosted. Oh, here is it bends? Yeah. Next, Widgie. How can I eat my lunch? Instead of it being a dessert, which is like ham ice cream. And yeah, I'll pack up and then carry on. Bye bye. I drove 10 miles along and then across the valley to get to the next mountain pass. A 10,000 foot mountain pass. This was going to go well. The total climb for this pass was over 4,000 feet, which meant slow progress. Especially with a couple of stops to cool down Willie's engine. And progress was about to get even slower, because the road ended. Well so far we've seen scooty scoot and pushy push, and as the trail got steeper, the snow got deeper, and the air got thinner, it was now time for Humpy Hump. Ah, you bastard! Go on! Well, that didn't work. Back to Scooty Scoot. Well, I'll let you cool down because you're at, apparently according to that, 116 degrees. Progress was slow, but it was still progress, and as long as Willie turned left like I wanted him to, all would go well. Or just be a prick. We were now at 8,000 feet with another 2,000 feet to go. This wasn't looking good. The amount of obstacles I had to overcome were now stacking up against me. At this altitude there is now 25% less oxygen in the air, which means less engine power and a grumpier Ed. Shubeth, answer my emails! My patience and determination carried on though, even when Willie's solid rear axle completely ignored the front wheel steering. Silly sausage! It was now a constant battle to keep moving and stay on the ice layer on top of the snow and not break through to the soft layers beneath. Or have the chain guard beach on the ice mounds. Famous last words, I think I'm approaching the summit. <sighs> Sun's gonna go down soon though, so I might be camping up here for the night. Now at 9,000 feet and 28% less oxygen, I was starting to reach my limit of endurance. To keep Willy moving now, I had to frequently deploy a manoeuvre called the Superman, which is a soul-destroying way to travel. Uh. <sighs> I am sleeping on this mountain tonight. <sighs> I want to get to somewhere where I'm not camped, like right next to the trail in case some moron comes down and crashes into me. Come on Ed, temperature's dropping. Well hello again, I left the GoPro inside my pocket so that it could warm up. Here I am setting up camp. There's my x mat which is filled with down, so it's lovely and warm. And I don't know if you've ever seen a snozzle before, and I don't mean my snozzle, but it's a dry bag with a little willy on the end of it, down there. So when you inflate it, you squeeze the air out of the dry bag through the willy, and you inflate the camping mat. I don't use the Therma S because I like my spine and I don't like the sound of sleeping on a thousand crisp packets being trampled on. Xped, hit me up. I keep buying these with my own money and that's cool, but um, you know, if you want me to... Ah, oh, tits, I've just given you the free promotion. And if you're one of those losers that goes, Meh, I don't sleep on an inflatable mattress because if it bursts, then I'm in trouble. I was like, yeah, dickhead. I've just been driving on four inflatable tyres all day. If they burst, it's much worse. I've got a repair kit, and uh, I always have a backup plan, and I can dismantle the Jeep seat, uh, and so I can lay on it. You don't need to worry about me dying. Oh no! My snozzle flew off. That's what I tell all the ladies. And then, if anybody's ever wondered what a $1,000 of sleeping bag looks like, it's this. Let me show you the happy sticker. 
It has a comfort rating of minus 41 Celsius, minus 42 Fahrenheit, a limit of comfort of minus 56 Celsius and minus 69, nice, Fahrenheit, an extreme limit of minus 84 Celsius and minus 119 Fahrenheit. And from memory, that is eight degrees off of the coldest temperature ever recorded on Earth. The Rab Expedition 1400. Rab, if you want some promotion, <laughs> This sleeping bag's 10 years old now, and still going strong. Um, I believe your new ones are hydrophobic. If you can send me a hydrophobic one, that'd be awesome. Fluffy, 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 fluff, fluff, fluff. Let's go outside and see what it looks like. Looks like it does in the daytime, Ed, except now everything's darker and wetter, whiter. Get this vitamin water inside my jacket to stop it from freezing, so. Oh, we are down to minus 6.9. Nice. Oh, it is not fresh. Not fresh, not warm. I don't have hypothermia, you have hypothermia. Actually, good point Matt, I have had hypothermia once, which sucks, it was one of the worst things I've ever done in my life. But, on the plus side, I now know what hypothermia feels like and what happens leading up to it. You don't need to worry about me, audience, I'm fine. I think this might be dinner. <sighs> it was indeed dinner. I sat down to enjoy my meal, hoping not to break my teeth in half on the M&Ms that were now minus 8 degrees Celsius. Oh, they're very really hard. Ah. I'm tempted to one day maybe film something, some sort of video about how to camp when it's ultra cold, because I get a lot of questions about it. Step one, be really warm blooded, like me. As long as I've got food going in me, normally just burgers, chips and chocolate, then cold doesn't really faze me. Step two, enjoy being miserable, and then you are well on your way. So it's not very interesting, but neither's my night. It's 8 p.m. now. The sun rises in 11 hours. I don't really have any battery powered devices that I can use to entertain myself. <laughs> Not like that. <laughs> so I am going to go to bed and I will see you in the morning. Good night. Wish me luck. Well, audience, you obviously didn't wish it hard enough. Time to begin today's struggle. I'm gonna put the camper gear on the Jeep and then let chaos continue. Ugh. Didn't tuck in my trouser legs. School boy here that one, Ed. Do some water? <laughs> yeah. Well, this isn't the first time that I've got a crusty white sock that doesn't bend. <laughs> yeah, my boots are frozen to the wrong shape. These aren't still toe capped. Get on my foot. <sighs> That's cold. I'm really sucking all the heat out of my feet. I'm outside. Oh, and it's tropical. Mm-hmm. We're having fun. We're having fun. <laughs> so I've got another three miles of uphill to do, apparently. So I've put my tools strapped to the front to try and put a bit more weight on the front so it actually steers, and also to try and stop the back sinking in as much. Carrying five kilos of ice to drink is fairly pointless because I don't know if you've noticed, but there's a lot of it. Kick that out of the way because somebody driving along that could annoy them. Oh, that's five kilos less. If you don't use a metric system, it's a, what, the weight of two house cats. I, I don't know how Imperial works. Well, here goes nothing. Well, let's see what happens if I just go to pull away, shall we? Yes. No. <sighs> Come on, I don't want to sleep up for a second night. For hours and hours, I pushed on up the mountain. Literally. This was brutal. The combination of lack of air for the engine, the incline, and snow meant Willie could now rarely pull us uphill. It was a never ending cycle of pushing, supermanning, reverse supermanning, and just generally hating my life choices. Oh. I 
I have indeed skipped leg day. Oh, and you know I talked about the lack of oxygen making me grumpy? Well, there was now even less oxygen at this altitude. Uh, stop turning right, you moron! But despite being grumpy, an annoying character trait of mine means that I will relentlessly carry on. Steer right, turn right! Well, until I can't carry on. We have a problem. Willie is all the way over there. I've walked to here and it's the same stuff. The snow is just getting deeper and deeper and there's no tracks for me to follow. I'm too narrow so I have to have one wheel where there's traction and then one wheel is in over a foot of snow and we just get stuck and we've taken about four hours to do half a mile. So unfortunately we've got to admit defeat and turn round because this just isn't working. And just in case I haven't really conveyed how steep these snow ridges are, hopefully that does it. It's a foot and there's this grippy stuff and that grippy stuff and this huge mound in the middle which is Soft as puppy poo, which Willy just sinks right up to the axles and beaches. There's no choice. It is what it is. Daytime temperature update, minus 5.5. And it's 2 p.m., which is kind of when it should be the warmest. So, yeah, we're just gonna have to head back. I can't wait here for somebody to tow me over. I don't think anyone's coming. I really don't like turning around and going back the way I just come, but here I had no choice. The plan now was to abandon trying to make it over this mountain range and instead head south through the clear valley until I got to a side road that ran alongside the interstate that had been cut through the mountain. Not ideal, but it meant a chance to listen to some music and cover some distance through this gorgeous landscape. Temperature update and the time it took me to turn around Willie, it's minus 6.3 Celsius. Come on Willie, please go downhill. I don't have it in me to do that all again. Come on. To set up camp for the night. You can tell by the lovely view. <laughs> uh, we'll see what it's like in the morning. But this is interesting. So minus 4.1 Celsius. It's uh, like 8 p.m. at night. We'll press the min max. Minimum minus 25.9, which is like the last couple of days. So we'll see what the temperature is. Oh, that's kind of liquid. And probably not piss. Mm -hmm. And for dinner we have a chewy 
granola bar. So I'll give you a hint. At minus four, it ain't a chewy granola bar anymore. Oh, oh fuck. 190 calories per bar, apparently. So I think we're gonna have like four of them for dinner or something. I had a massive lunch again. Willie and I have now pushed south of the mountains. So we're now approaching what's known as the San Rafael Swell, uh, which is basically desert. So no more snow and hopefully no more 10,000 feet. Everything here should be about 6,000 feet or so. The temperature will be a bit milder. I say nighttime temperature is probably around, you know, minus five rather than minus 10. But yeah, this is about as interesting as it gets at night, really. And I'm gonna have a couple more of these, drink some more ice, and go to bed. So I'll see you in the morning. Cheers. Ah, tits. Hi guys, I can't talk a lot because this video is already way too long, but thank you for watching and if you'd like to support the channel, you can get t-shirts and hoodies from c90adventures.co.uk or honestly, if you just click like and subscribe, that helps the channel so much. And I'm really sorry about at the end of the previous video when I teased about epic footage in this video, it's actually going to be in the next video. And as I said before, you have no idea what's coming. So yeah, I'll see you then. Cheers!